welcome to Garrock Farms. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some shop projects here on the dairy farm. It's getting cold, it's getting dark, so we figured we'd get some stuff done here in the shop. First, we're gonna work on the skid steer grapple, and then I think we're gonna we're gonna try to work on the on the old Honda Foreman four-wheeler. all that uh, aggressive uh, logging you're, no, you're doing. No, I had nothing to do with that. No. Yeah, you only use that heavy duty, uh, what is it, a variant? Well, we got that, that root grapple. I like using this one better. It's lighter, but it, it does beat it up more. So we ended up putting an extra prong on the end. These holes were the ones we were using. They all wobbled out there. So then what I did is I just went to every other hole and then I had to find, I break one of these every now and then too. Or where they get bent so bad that one will be hanging like four inches lower than the rest so it's hard to do stuff. So I bought some new ones and then I moved them all over so then they weren't so wore out. Because to replace the whole grapple was a ridiculous money. So we did some welding up in here. I had some problems up in here in the time. So when we do the really heavy stuff, we use the root grapple. But once in a while, some finer brush or something, even that little bit we were doing up there, that was really nothing. If this person just has to take their time a little bit. It's all gonna break eventually if you just keep using it all the time. That's just how machinery is. You have machinery, you gotta fix machinery. And if you have old machinery, you become a very good mechanic and an excellent welder because of it. That's what one, one older guy told me. He said, you're gonna become a really good welder when we started out with used machinery. And that's very true. Yeah, so the reason they're welding now is because dad doesn't want that to spin. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll come loose over time. See these holes too on the bottom side are the same, or a little bigger, but then they're tapered and what happens over time, these get loose and the next thing they spin to the side and they're all different directions. So we just put, run some weld around them. I mean, farmer fabrication, it all is gonna work. We bought this grapple, what is this grapple? This has gotta be 15 years old already at least. And I mean, they shake all our, move all our bedding with it, some brush, even in big square bales, I'll just grab them. And, and I think this is, uh, this is funny, these guys will laugh at it. So uh, we got a nice wire feed welder and dad got the, the, old, the old arc welder all set up, ready to go. Even though the nice new wire feed with it, well, the whole unit isn't new, but the liner is like, new. Yeah. I don't think it welds as hot. Oh. I think when you get like heavy, heavy drawbar type material, I still think I'll take the old Lincoln arc welder. I'm not a very good arc welder, but I want to try out the, the helmet. So. <laughs> well, we don't have to be too pretty here. Yeah, we're not going to be putting this in any showroom anytime soon. But that's just it. This the arc welder. You can get a little sloppy with it, and that that's more for pretty welds than something finer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some finesse work. I went to welding school back in 1985, back in high school. So I might be forgetting some of the. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, and I'm sure your welding, your rods are are brand new and they're not old. And <laughs> old. <laughs> yeah, I just took them out of the container, but. The...
I've been welding these, and then then you a week later you come back and weld them some more. That's how you do it. I mean, we could take them to a welding shop and get it done better. But we get it done. If it doesn't have to be fancy, we're gonna just do it. it. Pays to fix it up. I wonder what one of these would cost new. I haven't priced one in a while. We had to replace these ends on here. I had trouble hooking it up here one day. And then I thought maybe I had some something frozen in there, but then it was in the shop. So this one here had to get replaced. This one here was fine. They're like over $100 a piece, I think. Depends on which end you get. And then the hose, I got a leak in the hose. And usually what happens is when we're hooking up, right here, ends up maybe nicking it. You gotta really be careful. But the hoses are really reasonably cheap. You can take those to your local Napa store and they'll just imitate what you already have. It isn't too bad to do. It's just a matter of the inconvenience. And the big thing is, is not to lose all the oil. So when you smell hydraulic fluid, time to stop and see where it's coming from. I think that went pretty good. Yeah, I'm saying I don't ever, I don't ever Fixing use it. Fixing everything. Dad there. broke when you were gone. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm having fun. See back here. I put this piece in. That's a wrench from some type of machine. I think that was some kind of hamo or something, but there was a big long something. But I had to reinforce this. That whole thing let go one day on me. That's the reason why we brought the root grapple now. So that's a way heavier thing, and, but it's it's kind of a brute to drag around too. But this thing gets used way more. Then the other thing is, is I, I made another one of these, which hooks into here. It's just to keep the hoses from rubbing the wheel. But when we do bedding, typically there's very little rubbing going on, and we're, we hook it up. We only got it hooked up for what five minutes, and we unhook yeah, it again. Yeah. But a lot of it is the way these hoses are set in here. Now the other one, the hoses are so long, they come way up here, come way back down. So I actually got them in upside down. And then I got a bungee cord I wrap around in here to keep some of the slack out. So if it needs more, the bungee will give way. Yeah, I think that other grapple was meant for a bigger machine than this. It can, it, it can be used on this machine, it's fine, but this machine and bigger. But the deal is, is you got so much iron out here, you got a half a ton of iron before you start lifting stuff. That's really the, the thing that, so the, the better you know, attachment is usually a light attachment that's very built, very strong. So you gotta kind of find that happy medium in there somewhere. Since we're in here fabricating, do you wanna work on your four wheeler? Or do you wanna go work on the door? I'm gonna get this out of here, but I was gonna move these holes here. Just pull here. Maybe the, see that the, um, the protective liner, the sock that goes over the, the sock is binding here a little bit. The Kevlar, the anti-slice. <laughs> anti-slice? Yeah. Maybe pull one, now we'll pull the other. So here's some of our attachments. That's I think a 66 inch these all are. I think they're all the same width. And here would be my feed. So someone asked about the you know, what we do for our when we're loading feed. So we got two buckets. And then the smaller one is actually the dirt bucket feed bucket. And this larger one is basically, it's a little bit lighter, but it's taller here. That's our manure bucket. Manure snow bucket. I've got two of those, but the other one's got kind of some holes in it. It's rusting out already. They didn't want to give me nothing for it, so we just kept it. All right, next project. And dad, he could probably explain a little better too when he gets over here. We're gonna try to pull this rack back out on this four wheeler here. This is his OG, his old four wheeler. And this old rack, it's hard to tell without a, another one there, but it's kind of shoved in, it's kind of bent back. We're gonna try to rip it forward or bend it forward. Maybe we have to heat somewhere like down here or something and uh, 
and bend it back. So that's the next shop project here. Hopefully that goes good. This is the 03. This is my old faithful. So put this up so we can get this fixed back up. I know the newer one will never do what this one did. It'll go bad before that. This ain't built the same. It seems like the suspension's way better on this one. It's a lot more steep. Pull this tractor back. Here it's bent. You think we heat it, and then do we like use a, some kind of come along or something to pull? See what's happening is the whole, all the plastic and everything is pushed ahead. We put the rack on; it's almost rubbing us light. It must be pushed ahead, maybe like an inch or so. Just from bumping in a few couple of things. Get a little creative up here it just swivels on these things so that should come I think it's just right here here and here at least get some of it out well if it if it got pushed back there it can it should be all well, we can, back we'll get it it's just we don't want to end up making more damage while we do it so then let's see if we turned around what if we we could tie it tie the four wheeler to the tractor out of the hitch and then yeah, Maybe well, skid steer. The bobcat could be up front. Yeah. Maybe that. But we just use the bobcat that we hook on, like right here. Just pull slow. Well, we could figure something out here. Maybe we kind of warm it up first. Well, you get working on the pull. I guess we can tie it up. Play tug of war with the pull. You found your gas problem. It leaks out. Well, yeah, maybe it's just disconnected. We didn't see nothing down through there. I thought we'd see it here. I think you can get a side shield off by you, maybe. So it's either to float stuck and... So if we're gonna break something yet today, we better get at it. Yeah, we're on our time. Do short. Do something short. Do something short.
success. What do you think? Did you kind of give the people a backstory at all when you were holding the camera? About what? About this four-wheeler? How oh, this is this is your your main this is rig? My old faithful that got revitalized and brought back to life, and now it's here. So what happened was is well, like fencing, I'd be dragging railroad ties way up in the woods over the hill down to where we got a fence because you couldn't get there, but enough, just anything. And uh, a lot of that type of stuff. And the only thing I wish they would have is a lower gear. So it's like, you know, so you could just creep, you know, because this thing, is, this is the very stable. The other one has got too much suspension. It's bouncing. This one here sticks to the earth way better. Years and years of all this heavy use, and then we even we would load the back up with stuff and the front up with wood or whatever you were. Yeah, and they've seen how we're pulling that trailer around too, so it's more trailer. than what you can just fit on the four wheeler. I well. mean, we're going slow, we're being careful, but we're getting there done, and in years and years of that, it just puts so much strain on everything. So what happened is in the transmission, you would hear like a, it wasn't all the time, it'd be like a clicking. It was like second or third gear, wasn't it? it wasn't. Well, I don't know if it meant just when it, just when it was in gear, it'd get click, click, click. And it would only be like when I'd go downhill or something. So something was, I think we had a chip off or something and it was interfering. And then one day it just locked up, which it, just like anything, it just, it's used, it's used heavy. So then the person that we took it to, a person that does all these small motors and stuff, and she said that it looked good in there. She said everything looked good. She said there was one gear chipped or something. She had to replace that. And then she did some other stuff while she was at it. There was a bunch of stuff. But this one, it certainly runs a lot better than it used to. But we just want to get this one back to life again. Because you can't buy them like this just anywhere. Yeah, maybe these people might have a, a comment about that. What what new UTVs or ATVs would compare to an old Honda Foreman or any old ATV when it comes to built heavy and, and low? Well, durable, and it's, that's the thing. The, these machines, I don't believe they're building anything for working anymore. I think the, the closest you could get is, is like a Kubota uh, UTV. I know those are geared really low, but even that. They got the side-by-sides on yeah. those ranching machines. Well, when it comes to an ATV that's... It's tough, I don't know. Well, we used to have a dealer real close by to us. It was kind of neat to stop in there and see what was new. So my first four-wheeler, I'd never driven a four-wheeler in my life until um, 97. I mean, there was a bunch, few guys had three-wheelers. There wasn't a lot of stuff, and very few of them were four-wheel drive at that time yet. So we bought a 400, a Honda 400. I wanted a red one, they had a green one, so we just bought it. I put the floorboards in, because they didn't have this. They didn't have this whole thing in because like now I can take a block of salt and set it there or whatever. Or you put your feet in there. Otherwise, they just had them pegs sticking out. So we bought these things that it was the same company that sold me the rack. And then we had a windshield we had on it. Then that would kind of protect your hands from like if you had some berry bushes or something scraping around. And then I built this box. And I'm trying to think what else I put on that one. And I think I had seven thousand dollars into that one back in ninety seven. Yeah, that's uh. And then it was so then in old three, I forget why we went there. We maybe I don't know if we were going there for oil filters or what we were doing. And then they had this one sitting there in the trade in value on the old one. They gave me really good on it. This one I think it's got twelve inch wheels. That one only had ten. So a little bigger wheels. It stood a little taller. And the wheel base I think might be two, three inches more or something like that. It ain't a lot. I mean, if you, if you don't see them together, you would never think, you'd think they're the same machines. So that 400, and then this is a 450, and it had the easy shift, which is all up here. Uh, which is kind of nice, because sometimes you can be off to the side like this, and you can still do your shift in. Or like if I'm holding on to a calf, I don't necessarily have to have my foot down in there by the shifting. But then there is a, which side is that on? I think it is on that side, isn't it? So there is a rod in the toolbox in case that doesn't work, you can still shift it. And then of course you got, you got right here. And a few times I had a, a slow battery where I had to pull start, it. pull start it, but I could get home. And then the other thing I noticed they got is that fuel. Oh, the, the reserve tank. The reserve. Where it's, so it must pull out of like the side of your tank or like somewhere towards the bottom, but not directly on the bottom. So then if you do run it out of fuel, 
you can turn that valve and then I think it's it's sucking all the But then you away. have to keep that in your mind when you get home to refuel. Because I've done it where we just slips our mind. <laughs> then we go, because you could go quite a ways on, on reserve, you know, just a little, little up in the hills here. Yeah, so they have this, yeah, I'll show them the valve here. It's just a nice feature, a nice valve so that um, you, there's lot, you have a second chance before you run it dry. Well, I think it's designed to get out on them trails someplace. I mean, you could be a long ways. Well, yeah, so they got, so this says fuel. That says, okay, here it's uh, on. Here's off. See, that's the other thing. Maybe we could have shut the fuel off. Then we wouldn't have to worry about that. And then, uh, then reserve is there. <clears throat> I think that's a smart feature. And my other one don't have that. My, my new one has got some digital thing up here. A, digi mean, a digital gauge. It's ri ridiculous because I have trouble figuring out what the bars mean. Are they, is it half empty or half full? You know, it's that, which side of the scale is it trying to tell you? I think, uh, I think this winter, if these guys leave down in the comments, if you'd like to see uh, an overview, just a whole video about the fleet of four wheelers. Cause we've got three of them and they're all set up a little different when it comes to work. And maybe we could go through yeah. likes and dislikes, of all of them, different tire setups and different attachments. Oh, yeah. Well, basically that Honda 400 and this Honda 50, 450, and then the other one I think is called a 500. But I mean, just look at how the handlebars wore off here. Yeah, I bet, does it say how many hours you have on it? Is that right? Well, that's how many miles are on it. And then we press, let's see. Yeah, that one. That's how many hours are on it, which is probably a better representation for a, a farm four-wheeler. The thing is, is we don't go down the road. It's a lot of short, but the miles we do put on, they're very hilly. You know, it's pulling stuff. It's, it's carrying tools with, that's the thing. It's the type of miles that were put on this and that. So I like it. I mean, if I could bought it, it's just like that 38 Magnum chainsaw. If I could bought another one like that, but those days are gone. We're not gonna get that stuff anymore. And we got lucky. So when we bought the 500, my wife even said, well, what about that 400 there? The thing looked like new yet. And, and all the grip was on the handlebars real nice. And the, the, it still had original tires. They were kind of wore down. I don't think the thing ever got off the gravel road. It didn't haul nothing. You know, the racks were all nice and clean. All the paint was on it yet. And, I, and we got that for, I don't remember what the money was, but it was just a fraction of nothing compared to the new one. <laughs> that new one back, what was, it, what was that, a 15 or 14 or I think? It's I'm right not right around that. It, but that one was like 11,000 then. No, yeah, that was yeah, pre-COVID, pre-supply shortage. Yeah, that's the whole thing. That's a crazy money for what we, you know, and then here a few years into it, I'm kind of disappointed how it handles, but I don't know, they're all, they all got their place, so. But the video is getting kind of long and we're running out of battery, so we're gonna end it off here. Leave your comments down below if you'd want to see more about our four-wheelers and uh, uh, leave some comments down below about what you think of our shop tactics. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, this was experimental. We figured we had nothing to lose anyway, but we did get it. We got it pulled back. So thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our videos. Make sure to share it, like it, subscribe, but see you next time.